In this video, you will learn about logarithms. So what you already know is that the exponential function y equals 2x has an inverse of x equal to 2y. And we get that by taking y and x and swapping them. Now what we need to do is to isolate y to find the inverse. However, in order to do this, we need the logarithmic function. So the inverse, I'm going to tell you, is log with a little 2 written kind of below the line x equal to y. So what this means is that y is the exponent of a base 2 that gives a result of x. So let me look at this um, in terms of the form. So in the exponential function, we have y equals b to the power of x. Now the inverse, I'm going to rewrite this first as x equals b to the power of y. So all I've done here is swapped my x and y. However, in order for us to find y, we now write this as log with the base of b x equal to y. So the log of the x and the y are all on one line, whereas the b, the base, is written a little bit lower and smaller as well. So we say that this is an exponential form, and this is in log form. So these two actually mean the same thing, but they're just written in different forms. Whereas y equals b to the x and x equals b to the y, these are actually inverses of each other. So y equals b to the x is also the inverse of log x with a base of b equal to y. So let's write this out in this box to help you remember. So x equals b to the power of y. So this is our base. And the y here is our exponent. And this is the same as y equals log with the base b and x. So notice now that my exponent is over here. And my base, it still looks like a base because it's written below, is right over here. Now there's a couple of restrictions. The base, b, has to be greater than 0. And b cannot equal to 1. Now you might be asking yourself, why does b have to be greater than 0? So let's take a look at a couple of cases. So if b were equal to 0 we would have x equals 0 to the power of y. So y could be anything and it would still be x. So that doesn't make sense. If b equals 1, we have something similar. So x equals 1 to the power of y. So 1 to the power of anything will still equal 1. So again, y can be any value, which doesn't again make sense because we have too many um, values. Now lastly, what happens if b is a negative number? So let's say b equals negative 2. So we have x equals negative 2 to the power of y. Now the problem with this is if I then go back into thinking of y as a fraction, let's say y was a half, then we wouldn't be able to take the square root of negative 2. So y will only work if it has positive or I guess odd roots, but if it's an even root, then we wouldn't be able to take um, the root of these negative numbers. So that's why the b value has to be greater than 0 and b cannot equal to 1. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, it's useful to know how to change back and forth from this exponential form to the logarithmic form. So I like to think of the base, and it's easy, as that little number that's written underneath the log. So for example, here we have 5 and it's to the power of 4, and that equals 625. So same thing with the next one. We have 6, and then to the power of negative 2, and that equals 1 over 36. Change it to log form. Sometimes I find that a little bit more difficult because you have to kind of think about where all the numbers go. But again, we have log, and we already know that this is a base of 2. So this is the base 2. 
an exponent, remember, is our answer because a log actually is the exponent. So that means that this equals the exponent because a log equals the exponent. So the 8 must go over here. So same thing with the next one. We have log. The base is 3. And our answer is negative 3. That means that this has to be 1 over 27 in here. And that equals negative 3. So remember to think of log as an exponent. Um, and then you'll remember that the exponent is what goes on the other side of the equal sign. Okay. So now we're going to take a look at something called common logarithms. So you'll notice, for example, on your calculator, um, there is no base. There's no 2, there's no 3, there's nothing written there. So whenever the base of a log is not given, it is assumed to be base 10. And so your calculator also assumes a log of base 10. So if I just ask you what is log 100, what you're asking yourself is what power of 10 gives 100? So in other words, let me rewrite this like this. So we have log 100 with a base of 10. And let's say that's equal to y, just to give you a little bit of some context here. So now I can rewrite this in exponential form, so this would be 10 to the power of y. equals 100. So here now we can see that y must equal 2. So that is what I mean when I say that log is an exponent. So when I say log 100, I'm asking you 10 to what power, what exponent will give me 100? And that value is 2. So if you take a look at these examples here, 10 to what power will give me 1? So if you like, we can also write equal to x here. So we can say 10 to the power of x is equal to 1, and that value here, x, is equal to 0. So remember, the base can't equal 0, but our solution can equal 0. So 10, sorry, 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 1, so log 1 is actually equal to 0. So we can think of this as well. So let's make it equal to x to make it nicer for you to think about. So we have 10 to the power of x equals 0 0.1. And let's make that 0 0.1 to be 1 tenth, so it's easier to see. So that means that x, in this case, has to be negative 1, so that we get 1 tenth as our fraction. Now, what about when logs are not um, having a base of 10? So we're going to do something. Uh, we're going to change from log form to exponential form so that we can use um, that exponential form to evaluate, and that's actually quite useful. So for example, let's say that I ask you what's log 243 with a base of 3. So again, to make it nicer visually for you, let's say that this was equal to x. And now we're going to change this to exponential form. So again, remember we have 3 to the power of x is equal to 243. And then I guess you can guess and check or use your calculator to do that as well. And you will find that x is equal to 5. All right, so let's do some more examples to show you how this works. So we have this equal to x. So 2 to the power of x equals 32. And we know that in this case, x has to equal 5. So 2 to the power of 5. So remember, log 32, what? exponent will give me log 32 when the base is 2. All right, so let's make this equal to x. So we have 9 to the power of x equals to the fifth root of 81. And let's rewrite the right-hand side so we get 81 to the power of 1 fifth. And if I equate the bases like we've done with exponent, using our exponent rules, so 81 is the same as 9 squared to the power of 1 fifth. Then now we can see that since the bases are the same, my exponents have to be the same as well. So here we have x is equal to 2 over 5. Okay, last one's a little bit weird looking, but let's set it equal to x. So remember this is my base, so I have 11 to the power of x. And this is the whole value that I am evaluating. 
So that equals 11 to the power of 7. So therefore, now setting it up in exponential form, I can see that x must equal 7. All right, last type that I'm going to show you, what happens when it's already in log form? Well, we can still rewrite them in exponential form to help us to solve. So uh, we have our base of x, raise it to the power of 4, because the 4 is our exponent, that equals 81. So if you like, we can now fourth root both sides, and so x is equal to 3. So the next one, we have 4 to the negative 2, and that equals x. So this one's convenient because x is already isolated. And so x is equal to 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4 squared. So x equals 1 over 16. You don't need to write this in between step if you feel that you understand what 4 negative 2 is already. And you can go straight to 1 16. All right, so the last one. We have 16 to the negative 1 fourth, and that's equal to x. So again, it's nice and convenient that x is already isolated. Um, but let's simplify this. So we have x is equal to, so I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over 16, and this will give me a positive exponent now. And the 1 fourth exponent is the same as the fourth root of 16. And the fourth root of 16 is 2, so we get 1 over 2. So very important uh, that you understand um, how logs work and then how to change them back and forth from log form to exponential form and vice versa.